In this video I want to show you a UI React library which is called ShedCN and how it can help you to implement faster your prototypes of React applications. So we already have lots of different component libraries for React, why do we need one more? And actually ShedCN is quite a unique library, why that? Because it is built on the top of Redix UI and Tailwind. You know what is Tailwind, this is just a bunch of helpers to use in your markup without writing any CSS classes. What is Redix UI? This is a library with lots of unstyled components and this is important because we want to apply our custom styling. Additionally to that, Redix UI focuses on accessibility, which is extremely important nowadays. So why do we need one more component library and how it helps us? The main point of ShedCN is to use Redix with Tailwind to provide beautiful styling for Redix. If you just need unstyled components, it makes a lot of sense to just use Redix. What you are getting inside ShedCN is lots of styled components. The typical Redix component will have just logic to implement a dropdown for example. There are zero styles inside this library. The main idea is that you will write all this styling by yourself. And it makes a lot of sense because the idea is to make it usable at any project with any custom styling. But sometimes you don't need that, you need just something like a bootstrap to have some styling which are looking nicely. This is where ShedCN comes into play. Here we are getting a styled component out of the box. But ShedCN is not using only Redix and Tailwind, in some cases it uses different libraries. Like for example for forms it uses React Hook Form and Zot, which are two most popular solutions to create forms inside React. If we are talking about DatePicker for example, this component uses a React DatePicker inside, which is a separate library and it is not related to ChatCN at all. And here is the huge important difference about ShedCN at all. Because a lot of people think, okay, I don't really want to have one more wrapper around my library. It doesn't make any sense to have one more dependency. This is where ShedCN shines. The main idea is that it is not a library where you import dependencies. It gives you full access to all source code, which actually means all components from ShedCN will live in your source code. You will maintain them and you can easily update them. This is just some markup that you can copy paste to make it working. Now let's have a look how we can use it in the real project. And here I generated a vid project with React and TypeScript. And our first step here is to install Tailwind, PostCSS and AutoPrefixer. This is what we typically do when we want to use Tailwind. The next step is to configure Tailwind. This is why npx tailwind css init minus p. I'm hitting enter and we successfully created two files for Tailwind and post CSS configuration. Now I want to jump inside tsconfig app JSON and here inside compiler options I want to specify path. And here we want to create add slash star and we want to map it to source slash star, which actually means it will look for such import inside source. Now I want to copy paste this section and jump inside tsconfig.json. Here I want to create compiler options and inside provide exactly the same stuff. The main point is that app will be used when running our application and tsconfig compiler options will be used when we will use a CLI tool. This is why we must duplicate it in two places. And the last thing that we need to do for our configuration is jump inside vidconfig.ts and import here on the top path from path and here we want to create a resolve. In this case vid will know how to build our application with new path. This is why here let's create an alias property and here it will be add and we will use here path resolve with directory name this is our current folder and here will be slash source which actually means when we have add it will be resolved to source. And the last thing that we need to install is types for node because we are using TypeScript. Now we can configure ShedCN. 
This is why here I will write in the console npx shetcn UI latest init. I'm hitting enter and it will install the package. Now we must create some configuration. Do we want to use TypeScript? Yes, obviously. Which style do you want to use? Default is just fine. Here is a color scheme. I will go with slate. Where is your global CSS file? Our file is inside source index.css. So let's type here source slash index.css. Do we want CSS variables? Yes. Do we use some tailwind prefix? No. And tailwind config.js is totally fine. Now here is an alias for our components. It is add slash components and add libutils for our utilities. This is also fine. Do we use React server components? No, we don't. And we want to write a configuration inside components JSON file. As you can see, all our dependencies are installed. And now inside our project, we have a components JSON file, which holds the configuration of ShedCN. The last thing that we want to do, we want to use some components from ShedCN library. In order to do that, we can write npx ShedCN UI latest add and here, for example, a button. With this command, it will add a button to our project. So we are not importing everything from ShedCN at once, but just a single thing. Let's have a look on our project. As you can see inside source, we got two new folders, components and lib. Inside lib, we have just utils.ts and inside components UI, there is a button TSX. This button T6 was added for us by ShedCN. Most importantly, as you can see, all these files is not just some import from the library. These are just normal source code files inside our project. So all things that we're using from ShedCN will live inside source components UI. And this is what we're getting here. As you can see on the bottom, we're getting a button component where we have some props and we're returning a component that we will render. Additionally, here on the top, you can see variants and we're using here class variance authority package in order to define variants of our button. Here we have default styles. These are tailwind classes and here is an object variance. We're getting here default variant, destructive variant, outline and secondary. Additionally, we can provide a size, which is also a variant. And here we are specifying default variants. And also on the top, you can see that we're using a CN utility from add lib utils. This is source lib utils. Here we have just a single function, which simply merges all classes together. And here on the bottom, we're using it here in the class name when we merge all our classes. Now let's try to use our button. So I'm just typing button and we're getting it from our components UI button. We can just write click me inside and we're good to go. As you can see in browser, our button click me was rendered. It is black and we have a nice animation in it. Most importantly here, our button is coming from chat components. And actually we can even write it like this, add components UI button. Now additionally here we can provide some variants. We're getting here a variant of default, destructive, ghost, link, outline, and secondary. Let's go with destructive, for example. As you can see now, it is a red button, and we're getting an amazing TypeScript support because our component is fully typed. When we're jumping here on the top, you can see all button props, which are coming from button variants. But here is the most important point. As this is a part of our source code, we can always update it. We can change here variants if you don't like them or you need other variants, or you can simply update the whole logic of your button. This is completely possible and library is not limiting you to do that. But here is a small problem that I can see for beginners. When people just start to work with React and TypeScript, it might be difficult to just get the whole file and understand all stuff which is going on here. And this is a button component which is extremely simple. If you are taking something which is more advanced, then it will be even more complicated. Now let's have a look how we can implement a simple login form with ChatCN. In order to do that, first of all, I want to add an input and a label. And additionally, I want to add a card to make it look pretty. What it does, it created for us three new components, card, input and label. Let's have a look on the card. The idea is the same. We have a component which we can change with some classes. We also get a component card header, card title, card description, content and so on. 
In exactly the same way we are getting an input and label, which are also configurable. And now let's have a look how we can use all this stuff in order to create a login component. Here is how you can do that. We have a component login form and I created it inside source components login form. So outside of chatcn UI folder. Here we're returning our card and we're getting this card from add components UI card, which means this is a chatcn. Most importantly, we can update any of these components if we need to. And as you can see inside, we can provide class names of Tailwind because each component always accepts a class name. So here we are using a card, card header, card title, description, and we are coming to the content. Inside here we are using label and an input as two different components which we installed from ChatCN. And on the bottom we have a button which we already used. Let's have a look in browser, this is how our form look like. We have our card with headline and description and two inputs, an email and a password. And it is nicely styled out of the box. But as you saw here, it doesn't hold any logic at all. It is just markup, which actually means you can use here plain React with your state in order to implement your form. But you might want to use ChatCN more by using a fully fledged form and not just an input and a label. And in order to do that, I want to install a component form. Now here inside components UI, we are getting form and as you can see, it is much more complicated. We are getting here things like form field, use form field, which uses React context, form label, form control, and so on. And this is how end form could look like. As you can see, I created stateful login form, which means it will use React hook form and Zod. So here we specified a form schema that we need an email and a password with at least eight symbols. And here is our form. So we're creating a form by using React hook form and rendering it here. But we are not using a simple input and label anymore. We are using things like form, form item, form label, and form control in order to create our form. As you can see, additionally, we are getting form message, which will implement error handling out of the box. Let's have a look in browser. Our form looks exactly the same, but now it is a real form with validation. I can click here, sign in. We are getting highlighted password that must be at least eight characters. If we are typing something correctly, the error will disappear. And by typing a wrong email, we are getting a default validation of browser. And additionally to that, we are getting all these accessibility features that we need, like area described by, area invalid, and so on. So ChatCN gives you lots of different components, which are inside your source code, and you can easily tune them. But if you still think that you don't need all this styling, then you might want to look on Redix UI because it is completely styleless components library and I already covered it in this video. So don't forget to check it out.